All right, everybody. Today um, we're gonna take a little we're gonna take a little step backwards to what we were doing on Monday with the importing the SketchUp stuff because we finally got SketchUp installed. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how that works. Um, so I I only one of you I believe actually knows SketchUp. So I sort of need to show you some of the simplest commands with with this method. Um, method you really shouldn't need anything except for the move command which is pretty easy um, but really like everything that everything that there is in SketchUp is a, an object and they have like groups and layers and everything like that just like all the rest of the software packages that you use um, the move command is this guy right up here or you can just hit M um, and it's like SketchUp is like the simplest thing that you will ever use in your architecture education um, you just click on a spot and then click on another spot to move it around, right? It's, it's that simple. Um, the, there are, there really aren't any, um, predefined object snap settings or anything like that. It just defaults to, um, it, it just defaults to the standard, uh, like end point, midpoint, and you can do some perpendicular stuff. So, um, without getting into too much detail on this right now, um, I'm just going to show you how to import something. So um, in order to get rid of the guy, I just selected him and hit delete. I'm sure you guys could have figured that one out. But um, the reason we're doing this is because SketchUp has this really nifty thing called the 3D Warehouse. So when you go to File, 3D Warehouse, and you go to Get Models, this little window pops up. Um, it's uh, I, I would uh, caution you about this because... Um, a lot of times the materials that are preloaded into these things are not really ideal. Um, they could be too high res, they could be too low res. So when they come in with materials, they you should probably bring them in knowing that you're going to override that material with something that is in uh, the Rhino or Maxwell material um, base. Okay, so I just wanted to preface that. So anyway, um, some of the stuff that we were looking for here... Um, I think what we put in last time, and I'm going to go through the process of re-putting uh, or replacing a few of them, um, but I'm going to try to find a simpler one, and that was like an office workstation. So once you um, search for that, you can see that there's a whole bunch of options, right? I mean, it's like it's almost endless. You could be searching through this thing for days. Um, one of the ones I grabbed, I think, was more like this, and it was really heavy, um, really overly detailed. But it looks like if I just wanted to grab, um, uh, let's see, I'll grab a couple of these because this one's nifty. It actually has like a, a light on it, which is nifty because I can apply a light to those materials, which I, I'm going to do. Um, so you can download those and just click agree and then load it directly into your model. Um, if it gives you this, it just means some of the geometry is a little messed up, just hit fix, it should be fine. So um, it, it comes in with a certain origin base point. I think that that's important um, for most applications, but not so much in Maxwell. But anyway, just drop that at the base point there on the left and you should be good to go. So um, so this right here is the, the <coughs> furniture that I brought in. Um, so I'd like each and every one of you to go through the process of grabbing a model. It doesn't matter what it is. You can grab the same as me or you can grab something kind of similar. But um, just do that now before we proceed. Sorry, Tim, can you, how do we search it again? Okay, so uh, next up here we're going to do that export process and import process. But um, I, I do think that it's very important to show you a little bit about when and where you want to start controlling your materials. Okay, so um, one of the things I mentioned here is that there are layers in um, in SketchUp. So if you go to Window um, and then under Default Tray, you can click on Layers and it comes up like this. So um, this is all one layer currently. Okay, um, but I do want to kind of, I guess, uh, point out that the materials that gets imported into Rhino when you import it is based off of the layers that you have here. So you sort of have options. You can change your material on this model, 
and add things to certain layers, or you can do it in Rhino. I will say this, it's usually a lot easier to just do it here. Okay, so, um, so anyway, what I'll do, and really the only things I'm concerned about here is the lights. Um, the rest of it, I'm just going to leave a, a blank white material because it's just a massing model, really. It's just trying to get a little bit of entourage. So what I'm going to do is um, hit the plus button to add a new layer. I'm going to call this lights. And I'm going to do two things. Um, I'm going to... Oh, I don't really like that. All right, I'm going to do two things. If, if you have this model, then you can do this. But if you don't have this model, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, I'm going to go into this family. And um, the thing about SketchUp is, like, when you download these families, they might have a few different um, layers of groups, and you have to double-click into them. So if I'm going to edit this thing, i got to double-click it. And if I click it again and it has a big box around it, that means it's another nested group. Um, so i got to double-click that again, uh, another nested group, and double-click it down to a point where I see, like, this little dot hatch pattern on a particular surface. Okay? So I don't expect you guys to be modifying anything. But I'm just doing this because this model I'm not a fan of. Okay? So anyway, um, if I hit the move command and I want to, like, what I'm trying to do is I'm not really a big fan of... Um, this light being a flat surface above and being a curved surface below. So I'm going to um, copy that so that I have a flat surface above and a flat surface below. Um, but the way you copy in SketchUp is using the move command. Except you activate the move command and then you hit Alt, uh, sorry, Control, and it creates a little plus sign next to the cursor and then you can move things around. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a point here and move it down on the blue axis. Yeah, it's just a reference point move. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, how do you get the layers on? Yeah. Double click and click. Go to Window, Default Tray, and click on Layers. That'll toggle it on and off. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I want to point out here real quick uh, before we move on, um, let's see, move, copy it over here. I just want to point out that if you look at it from the top, it's like white or gray, but if you look at it on the bottom, it's blue. Okay, so that is very similar to Rhino in the sense that um, it's, it has a surface normal and a positive and negative direction, and the materials are going to apply to the positive direction only if you do a typical material application. So um, I just want to grab uh, this surface, and I'm going to right-click and say reverse faces. So that turns up white. Okay, now, you don't need to know that now. Okay, I just wanted to show you the, the, the modifying process. Really, the only reason I modified that is because I'm going to take this uh, surface right here, and I'm going to take, if I hold shift, I can grab this surface as well. So now I have both of those. Okay, um, I can put it on, uh, if you go up to Entity Info, you can switch it to a different layer. So I put them both on the lights layer. Okay, that's important. The other thing that's important is I want to give it a material, a different material than what it is. So if I open the Materials panel, and this one you might use, um, I don't really care about what material it actually is as long as it has a different material so usually I pick things that are like high contrast in both color and and saturation so I'll just pick like a pink thing and I'll paint that pink and that pink okay so now when I look at this thing I can see that oh yeah by the way this was a component um, a component is like a family and if I modify this it modifies that one as well so that's why the other one changed as well so anyway um, now I know that those surfaces are a different material on a different layer, and so when I import it into Rhino, it should show up that way. So anyway, that's all I'm doing. Um, what, what questions do you have before I proceed? None? Okay, cool. So I'm going to stop this video here, and I'll go back in and do that process.